So for whatever reason, you found yourself in an argument against feminism. But here's the thing, your argument sucks. Hi, it's your your it sucks. Let's start with the most basic shutdown against feminism. Feminism is sexist. You've come to this conclusion because you've been taught that sexism is basically the prejudice, stereotyping and discrimination on the basis of sex. Right. You just said right. After saying that we have come to the conclusion that feminism is sexist based on the definition of sexism. Are you actually acknowledging that feminism is sexist? But, no, that is not how we have come to that conclusion. But we will in this video see examples of how feminism is sexist. Before I even get into this, I just want to state that it's impossible for the oppressor to be the oppressed. That's the nature of oppression. Thank you. However, you are wrong. It is possible to have hierarchical oppression. Medieval society had such structure. Being offended by something is not the same as being oppressed by something. Everyone, remember this. It is true that neither form nor other feminists are able to grok this. So bearing that in mind, quite simply, sexism is a form of oppression. No, sexism can take form as oppression, but sexism is not inherently oppression. I am not saying that men don't face negative stereotyping, and I am not saying that men don't face prejudice and oppression in society. <laughs> That is golden for anyone who did not catch what she just said. And I will blame you, because if it's designed to confuse you, I will break it down for you. 1. If oppressor, then not oppressed. 2. Not to refute men are oppressed. This gives us 3. Not refuting men are not oppressors. Let us add two postulates. 4. To be oppressed, there needs to be an oppressor. 5. Men and women are opposites. By 1 and 4. 6. Oppressed and oppressor are opposites. By 3, 5 and 6. 7. Not refuting, women are not oppressed. So Fawn is not refuting that women are not oppressed. This could mean that women are not oppressed. If we combine this with the goal of feminism, the privilege of men and women shall be adjusted so that the net difference in the adjustment is favorable to women. We have that feminism is about female supremacy. Alternatively, this could mean that Fawn has no idea which gender is oppressed, if any. Combining this with the goal of feminism, we have that Fawn is a female supremacist. The final alternative is that Fawn does not care about men and thus is a female supremacist. Conclusion Fawn and possibly more and maybe all feminists are female supremacists. However, only oppressed people experience all of that as well as it being institutionalized and systemic. Well, thank you for giving us a convoluted definition of oppression. Here's how your argument wouldn't have sucked. If you're discussing sexism within feminism, it should be about how some parts of feminism could actually be really problematic for trans people, as well as people who don't assign to any gender and people who are gender fluid. A lot of mainstream feminism at the moment needs to work a lot harder on being more inclusive. I believe it is enough to argue against it on the basis that it is advocating female supremacy. But men can get raped too. I can't stand this argument. You have to be a certain level of horrible to pit victims against each other, whatever gender. No one is doing that. We are telling you that you do not care about men. Also, I find that people use this argument a lot when discussing rape culture and- Everyone, remember that she is changing the topic here. Actually, they don't quite know what the discussion is about. Could it be because you have hijacked the definition? I want to handle this the right way because feminism supports all victims of rape. As long as we use the feminist definition of rape, it has to involve forced penetration of the victim. But in the context of why your argument sucks, we are fully aware that men get raped too. We are not ignorant. No, you are not ignorant. That is why you try to get rape redefined as such that men cannot get raped by women. What we were actually discussing was rape culture, so not the act itself. No, you have changed the topic. Rape culture is when you ask victims what they were wearing. You mean when police try to get enough information to find the witnesses rather than believing the victim at face value. Were they flirting beforehand? Dito. Asking if they possibly had too much to drink. 
Dito. Whilst anyone can get raped, rape culture predominantly affects women. Because feminists have not yet got their definition of rape to be the legal definition in all countries. And because their definition includes a loophole that makes it impossible for men to get raped by men and by women using strap-ons. Men do not get asked if they were showing too much skin. Neither do women get asked this. Perhaps people are suggesting to you that dressing less provocatively could reduce the risk of getting raped. Rape culture is currently ingrained in society. There is no such a thing. But you mean that innocent until proven guilty is ingrained in our society. There are people that would never rape anybody, but sometimes their actions and sometimes their words might contribute towards rape culture. Dito. Here's how your argument wouldn't suck. Every single rape prevention tip is geared towards people being in charge of not getting raped. Not teaching rapists not to rape. Because criminals do not care that they are committing crimes and not, not to commit them. People should do what's in their power to prevent being a victim of a crime. Even if it could teach people not to commit crimes, reducing the risk of being the victim is good for you. Hypothetically, we could teach criminals to commit less crimes, but until you have a good method for doing so, it is not practical. So there's the big problem. No. The other problem in that is that most of these tips are aimed at women. God forbid we try to help those who are the most likely to be the victim of rape of non-criminals. With colour changing nail varnish for example. Men who are afraid of rape can use that too and shame on people not for having found a good way to help men when there are less opportunities to do so. There needs to be more done to prevent rape for everybody, such as those glasses that change colour when they detect a substance. That way everyone can be safe. Get on that then. Well, that's just my opinion. Before any argument, you're going to have to show that you know what you're talking about before your opinion is valid. You mean before the argument is valid. I can tell you that I think socks have emotions. That's just my opinion. It doesn't make it true. That is neither an argument, ideology, value, point, opinion, theory, nor fact. It is a belief. Neither values, opinions, ideologies, nor beliefs have to be true. Most of the time this has been used because you said your piece, somebody else has come back with personal experience or references, or anything really, and because your argument doesn't extend past that's that, then you swiftly state that that is your made up opinion. If they really said something is an opinion, there is nothing wrong with it, unless they present a fact or theory. Instead of saying that's just your opinion, try saying, I thought of this, but I'm not going to do any research on this because I feel like I am right. Please do your research because without it no one has a leg to stand on. Perhaps you should have done some research too. I am so sick hearing about feminism. Shocker, so are we. Please help us not have to talk about this all the time. That is not an argument. Someone just stated that she is sick of hearing about an ideology. Anti-feminists are helping you. They are presenting facts and reason to demonstrate that feminists does not have place in the first world. If you listen to them, there will be less talk about the feminism. Well, I'm a woman and I don't find that offensive. This is quite a hefty topic about internalized misogyny and that is a whole other video. Internalized misogyny is not real, at least not to the extent feminism asserts. It is absurd to state that if you are a woman who does not get offended by something some other woman offended by, you hate yourself. Get fucking real. You don't have to be offended by everything. Your argument sucks because you do not speak on behalf of all women. No, she said I. She is giving you a counter example to your hypothesis, proving they are false. Neither do I. Neither does anybody. Except maybe Beyonce. If you're trying to make a joke, perhaps it should be something your audience would understand. When you say this, you're choosing to ignore the negative ramifications that this particular thing might have on other women. You may even be overlooking the negative ramifications this could have on you. Perhaps you just don't think everyone has a safe space against opposing views, and think adults should behave like adults and not be offended by everything. Either way, it's a really selfish argument. No, not really. 
advocating free speech is not selfish. I can't tell you how to feel about things. Then stop. That's up to you, but don't throw everyone else under the bus in the process. Again, perhaps people will just be adults. And just because you're offended, it does not mean that you are oppressed. You said so yourself. So how is it throwing everyone under the bus? Yeah, but what about men's rights? Men already have all the rights. We have proven otherwise. Feel free to prove us wrong. I think people use this argument a lot because it's hard to see just how something affects your life until you don't have it. I'm middle class and white. I come from extreme privilege and if it wasn't for people talking about it, I never would have thought about it. Because when you're privileged, you don't have to think about it. Then acknowledge your female privilege uh, laid out for you in almost every anti-feminist video. Also, men's rights movements that are around now don't even care about men. That's what really pisses me off. Being fair, any movement that sets out to help people is a good thing, right? The problem is the men's rights movements do not support male victims of rape, they do not support male domestic abuse victims, and they don't support trans men. Do you know who do support them? Feminists! Citation needed. Also, counterexamples. Communism, National Socialism and the Ku Klux Klan. Feminism is ruining movies. Slash series slash comics. This argument gets rolled out every time something gets launched with women in it, basically. No, not even when feminists produce any of those things. If you are going to make such a hyperbolic statement, at least at reference for half of what have come out the last year, it is impossible to prove you right or wrong here. And by the nature of you making a hyperbolic positive statement, research into this could only be favorable to you. It is impossible to prove you right or wrong here, and by the nature of you making a hyperbolic positive statement, research interests could only be favorable to you. It is impossible to find any reliable source that states this argument has not been used for anything. However, you can find examples of where it has been used. Therefore, we cannot take what you are saying seriously. However, is used when feminism is bastardizing an existing franchise. Fuck you for not wanting people to have the franchises they love intact. I don't care about how often it is used or even if it's used at all, but it is up to you to prove a lower bound for how often it is used if you are going to make a claim about how frequently it is used or whether it is used at all. Why is it totally fine to expect women to enjoy and relate to things that involve mainly men, but as soon as more than one woman comes on screen, we're taking over? You have to be sexist if you don't think entertainment with mostly your opposite sex can be enjoyable. Also, have you really never heard about chick flicks? Of course, by the nature of your statement, I can't disprove it. However, have you ever looked at the fan base of My Little Pony French? Here's how your argument wouldn't suck. Just injecting female characters into a film or a TV series and not spending the time developing their characters or even writing them not only ruins the movie and the TV show but also puts a massive hindrance in women in the industry and it's crap. I don't think you have to respond to this, do I? That means I can hit girls, right? Don't hit anybody! Why do you want to hit people? Is it like really hard to live, restraining yourself from hitting people all day? You're using this argument as a quick way to put feminists in their place. To make them think that this isn't actually what they want. I don't think you understand what's going on here. Men want to be able to defend themselves against women and object to society's view that it is okay to hit men but not women. The other thing is that you're already hitting us. In the UK alone, 1.4 million women and 700,000 men are suffering from domestic abuse. So we want you to stop hitting us. Let us assume your statistics are accurate. If for every other woman a man is also abused, why don't men deserve the same protection? Not all men. If we're discussing something about men and it's not something that you have particularly done, then that's great. The reason why your argument sucks is because you have to understand that many men have done this. A majority even. Whoa. For each horrible thing, a majority of men have done it. Since it would be absurd to think that for any crimes A and B, the group of perpetrators for crime A is 
same goop as the goop of Pokédex for crying. B. The vast majority of men have committed horrible crimes. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But I fail to see how your statistics support that a majority of men abuse women. It's always sucky to have to acknowledge that something that you're a part of has bad bits, but that's just life. No, it is only sucky if you lack the ability to distance yourself. So stop driving conversations back to you because it's not about you. This argument gets used a lot when women do things to protect themselves and are a bit defensive. No, it is used when feminists claim that all men are terrible people. As you said earlier, we encourage you to protect yourself. As we mentioned earlier, rape is up to us to stop. We have now explicitly stated that the majority of men are rapists. And that's when they say, but not all men. Like, you may not be a rapist, but you've got to acknowledge why women do certain things to protect themselves. You can't take these actions personally because there is a much bigger picture than you. The thing with all these arguments against feminism is that if you wanted to have a proper discussion about it, you would have Googled it and done your research, but you didn't, which makes you an ass. Right back at you. I didn't mean to attack anyone in this video, I just wanted to show you just how ridiculous these arguments sound. No, you just wanted to say that over half of all men are terrible people and that women who disagree with you should not think themselves. And I know there's tons that I missed, uh, which means I'll probably end up in the comments, which means, much to your excitement, I will do another one of these. You sound like a narcissist, but yes, it will be exciting to see more of your airheaded men. But generally, you should just research things that you're talking about, and if you don't know anything about a subject, don't weigh in with your opinion. Why do you? and maybe just trust what people say about their own experiences. Just kind of simple stuff. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's still here, so I'm just gonna... Asking for subscribers.